but quail is one of the easiest things to raise. And like I said, you got meat and you got eggs. Guys, today we're gonna be talking about quail. Well, good morning, guys. Welcome back to Four Boys Little Homestead Slash. Four Boys Play. As always, if this is your first time here, thanks for dropping in. Feel free to drop in anytime you feel, my friend. Now, I don't know how it is all over the United States or the world, but it seemed like this year around my area here, the interest in quail has picked up quite a bit, and I'm sure I have an idea why. And you may want to get involved in this too, because quail, rabbits, and chickens is one of the easiest to raise for meats that you can raise for yourself. So I can go uptown right now, and once somebody knows I'm raising these quails, I start getting a lot of questions, and I thought, well, I'd just make a video here because apparently it's a lot of people that don't know that much about quail. They've eaten them before, and that's about the extent of it, or maybe they hunt them back in the day or heard people hunting them, which is by white quail used to be around this area. But quail, these are conternics, jumbo wiles, some people call them conternics, jumbo browns. And the good thing about them, they are feather sexable. This is a female, you see all them specks right there all on her feathers on her chest. The male don't have them specks, he just got a light colored chest. I'll show y'all that in a moment. But these are conternix quails. And if you don't know nothing about conternix quills, a conternix quill versus, I'm gonna just use Bob White because that's what most people around this neck of the wood knows. A conternix quill from the day it hatches, I'm gonna say eight weeks is what I tell everybody, which could be a little bit earlier, a little bit, earlier, a little bit later, but most of the time from the day they hatch to eight weeks, they fully grown and processing size, and also a lot of them starting to lay their eggs at eight weeks old. To where a bob white quail, you're gonna have to feed him about 16 to 18 weeks to get him to his full size before they start laying eggs and can reproduce you any food. Now these are the jump Conternix Jumbo Wiles. And the jumbo, the difference is, guys, these birds average 12 to 14 ounces. Now, by white quail, only averages around 6.2. I think that's the average, Jay Kyle kind of call it, 6.2. So that's a good difference in size right there. Plus, in half the time from the day they hatch, you got meat. Now, I started out growing the conternix standard birds but for the meat to feed ratio they don't the jumbos don't eat that much more feed versus the amount of weight per meat i get off of them in eight weeks so that's why i chose the jumbo also the quail eggs the jumbo eggs weighs anywhere from 12 to 14 grams that's a pretty good size egg guys some of these quails here, I can take two quail eggs and equal just a, I ain't gonna say a large chicken egg, I'm gonna just say the standard chicken egg. Two of these will do it. Now, some of you may ask, what does a quail egg taste like? Well, to me, I actually like them better than a chicken egg for scrambling them and frying them. If you, if you eat eggs and you kind of say, well, it's got a little bit of a strong taste to it, the quail eggs, and this is just my preference, is a little weaker on the strongness. It ain't as strong. To where a duck egg, on the other hand, is a little stronger tasting than a chicken egg. So anything you do with chicken eggs, no matter what you cooking, you can use quail eggs also. So that's another plus in raising quails, besides the meat. Like I said, they, they're easy to take care of. Conternix quail, you don't need these big flyer pins. Actually, my pin here is a little high. You actually only need a pin about 12 inches high. My pin here, I got a little net in the top. Or anything over 12 inches 
if they try to jump up, they can jump up and hit their heads on the top and kill herself. So a 12 inch cage height wise is all you need. Also these quails raising them, if you give them too much room, they get territorial and they'll start fighting. And I usually don't have no trouble with that except coming into the spring like it is right now. And you'll see today, I actually come in here and put a divider in this pen I'm gonna start raising some more younger birds in my other pen. But your ratio, you want one male per every five females. Now you can go more than that, you can go up to 10, but the good, good ratio to make sure your fertility is good if you're gonna be hatching eggs is one to five and that's been working out good for me. Now I've been hatching eggs like I said, the one to five ratio really does good on making sure they get good and fertile. I cannot keep, I don't care if I put 20 females in there, I can't put two, fe two males together. They'll fight till they kill each other. And sometimes your hens will get territorial if you let them in too big a pen. Now, if you get on the internet and you start researching, they'll say you only need one square foot for every three birds. Well, to me, that's a little bit tight. I got right here four square feet. And I got five birds in here, which usually I normally have six. I usually have five hens and a rooster in that four square feet, and they do pretty good. But when I have this divider took out and let half of them have that end of the pen down there, which y'all can't see, and half of them have this, Every spring, they start getting territorial and they'll fight and they'll kill each other. That's the difference on a Conternix quail versus a Bob White. A Bob White quail, if he jumps out here, he can take off and fly and be gone. A Conternix quail, if he gets out on you, he'll jump up and try to fly, but he can't go but about 10 or 15 foot and he hits the ground. He just They just can't fly very far, just little short distances. That's why they wouldn't make it in the wild around here because the coyotes and bobcats wipe them out quick, which is what's already, I think, done happened to the bobwhite quills in this part of the world. Between that and the chemicals being sprayed and the fire ants, we don't hardly have no wild quills around this part of the world anymore. Not down here where I'm from. But like I said, you see, I got a little sandbox in here i like putting a little sandbox in here plus that's where they lay their eggs but they like getting in there dusting you ain't got to do that i just like to do it i got little self feeders here they rabbit feeders i have to show y'all something right here Guys, there's all kind of feeders on YouTube. And I've tried making a lot of them. And I got some videos on making some to keep from wasting food. But this right here is the best thing I've come up with. It's just a regular rabbit feeder. Took me a piece of valley tin. That way they had to squat down and stick their heads up in there to eat. And they ain't slinging your food everywhere. That's the best thing I've come up with. That way I can feel it from the outside. I ain't got to open the door every day. Cause quails, you want to keep them to having food at all times. You don't want to say, I'm going to feed them a little bit each day. Not can turn its quail in a cage like this. Cause then they get old enough, get territorial and start fighting and they do kill each other. But there's a good little way to build a feeder. Like I said, just, that's just a plain rabbit feeder. With a little shield over it, that way they have to squat down, stick their head up in there to eat. I don't think I've done a video on that, but I've done been using these for over a year now, and they work better than anything I've come up with. Quail, what I like about quail meat, which of course, just like anything, is best fried. But my favorite way of cooking a quail is you turn that oven about 450 degrees. You take that quail. I, I process mine whole. You take that quail and coat him with some olive oil and whatever kind of seasoning is your favorite seasoning. You set him in there on a baker sheet in that preheated oven about 400 degrees. 
450 degrees. It only takes like 15 minutes, sometimes 20. You got you some fine eating right there. But, like I said, I just wanted to make this little video because I know here where I live, it's getting to be a lot more people wanting quail, and we all know the reasoning behind all that with the price of food going up and whatever's going on in this old world we're living in. People starting to think about they better start learning and being how to start learning and being prepared to take care of yourself a little more, and I suggest you might need to do that too. I don't think we all going to starve to death, but it might get might get pretty hairy one day and you wish you had some. But quail is one of the easiest things to raise. And like I said, you got meat and you got eggs. Now here's a male I was going to show y'all. Y'all can see his chest. He ain't got all them specks on it like that hen had. So that's a feather sexable and at three weeks old, you can feather sex these. Now the tuxedos I had are white quail or some, there's some other colors out there in these contournances that's not feather sexable. You gotta vent check them. And I'm gonna show y'all on a male, put your hand right there, thumb below his vent. And y'all see that white foam? When you put your thumb below his vent and push down a little bit and you see white foam coming out, that's a male. And it's a white foam like shaving cream. It ain't white poo-poo. That's how you have to sex quails that's not feather sexable. So like I said, after I raised the tuxedos for a little while, then I got some of these jumbos, compared them to see food wise versus meat wise plus i like these are feather sexable at three weeks old i just chose to go with these guys i, I don't know nothing else really to tell y'all right off the bat i just want to make it aware out there of how easy these are to raise that you can raise them in little bitty cages smaller than this actually i got twice the size here you can raise Ten hens and a rooster and a two by two little cage. That's all you need. Now, of course, you're going to hatch eggs out. That's one thing about the contournates. They don't really go broody and hatch their own eggs. I just put them in a little incubator to hatch my eggs. But you got a full-time supply of food right here. So I just wanted to give y'all the top, most obvious information about the quails. If you knew the quails and you have any questions, please ask down there in the comments. I'll get right back with you and answer anything I can. If you like these little videos and you haven't ever subscribed, please reach down there and hit that subscribe button. It don't cost you a thing. It'll help Papa grow his YouTube channel here. Give me a thumbs up. Share my videos. That's the best way you can help me. As always, I hope y'all have a great day and a blessed week. God bless. See y'all next time.